E-girls, what are they? Who are they? And why are they not messaging me back? I'm Riley, and today we will be answering most of these questions. And to understand where it all came from, we have to go back to the early 2000s. No matter what the latest style in the shops is, there are always some kids who come up with their own look and Grafton Street is their catwalk. At the moment there are lots of different groups around. They call themselves names like Goths, Cureheads, Psychobillies and they dress a certain way depending on the kind of music they like. Goth and emo subcultures are thriving with their dark moody makeup, heavy black eyeliner, strong lipstick and pale foundation. A time of big changes, the beginning of a fracture into many smaller niches. Scene culture is on its way in. Emo kids are becoming more commonplace in the school halls. This. This is the primordial soup from which the e-girl emerged. While I'm not trying to say this is in any way a revival of goth culture or emo subcultures, there are definitely influences from many, many places. Goth being one of them. But... You can't ignore the large influence from East Asian beauty, Ugarty makeup for example. If you've spent any time on the internet, you've almost certainly seen e-girls, especially if you're on TikTok. An innocent looking, hyper feminine blend of various subcultures bringing together many different aesthetics into one distinct subculture which has been prevalent on the internet over the last five years in particular. It's cutesy aesthetics somehow in harmony with goth heavy eyeliner and grungy aesthetics. It's cute East Asian makeup. And somehow it works. Now, e-girls are by no means a new thing. They've been around as long as the internet has. Although it's not always been the nicest term to be called. Originally, it was definitely a derogatory term for women who pretended to play video games uh, in order to seek male attention. But in the last five years, we've seen a large shift in how they are viewed online, and in particular how the style has changed and become its own thing, which has become very popular on social media. Nowadays, it's difficult to go on social media, particularly, TikTok or Instagram Reels without seeing e-girls. A once ridiculed group of people now turned into one of the largest, most popular aesthetics for women online. I was going to try and make this without mentioning Belle Delphine, but I think there has to be something said there. I think Belle Delphine was the first big e-girl. Now, much more cutesy, a lot less grungy than a lot of the e-girls you see these days. She monetized her aesthetic in such a perfect way and became huge. Maybe I've spent too much time looking into it, maybe I'm reading too far into it, but there does seem to be a bit of a rebellion against the male-dominated world of the internet, particularly gaming. And it's quite interesting, rather than a rejection of capitalism, a lot of people online, e-girls, are embracing, you know, their ability to sell themselves as a product with things like OnlyFans, you know. If the opportunity's there, why not take it? In that way, it's quite different to, you know, punk and goth. But you've got to admit there are influences. Okay, well, I've probably talked about this more than I need to. So we might as well get into the makeup. I mean, that was meant to be the purpose of this whole video. So, yeah. Okay, so we've got foundation on already. Um, and I've done covering facial hair. If you want a video on that, I've already made a video of the link to that. Now, pink is probably the most important color here. So... I'm thinking pink eyeshadow, lots of blush. So, 
Let's go. Whoa, hey, a voiceover. So I'm going to start by putting some light concealer under my eyes. I'm just using a concealer that's a few shades lighter than my skin tone. I'm also going to put that down the bridge of my nose and blend that in. We're going to be adding a lot of highlight later in the inner corners of the eyes and I feel like this complements it quite well. So it's very subtle but I think it adds something. So yeah, we just blend that in now. Okay, so now on to blush. I'm just going to be using this cheap eyeshadow palette for our blush. It's just a, yeah, cheap one. Um, I'm going to be using this pink here. Normally I use a cream blush, but today for some reason I decided I would use eyeshadow because I liked the color. Um, and yeah, so we're just going to get that blended in. Just up along the cheeks, quite high up and quite a lot. I look like... I'm doing the blush pretty aggressively here, but this eyeshadow, in all honesty, is not the best and it does take quite a lot of effort to blend it, so yeah, I don't know. Now of course we can't forget lots of blush on the nose, cornerstone of the ear girl like that, so just going to put a bunch there and then I'm going to go through with a blending sponge and just soften up the edges. And then we're going to go for a pink eyeshadow as well. So I'm thinking we might use the same again, that one, but we're going to go for a little bit of brown under the eyes as well. So normally you don't see heaps of eyeshadow. It's, you know, bright colors, but it will be a lot lighter. So Maybe it's a bit more than we meant to do. That's all right. And then we're just going to add a little bit of brown under the eye. Um, yeah, I didn't show the color, unfortunately, but yeah, anything will work. So yeah, then we'll just do the other side. And now we're just going to blend that out with a large brush, sweeping outwards and yeah, just gently blending that for a softer finish. Oh, you can see my forehead there. <laughs> okay, and now for eyeliner, we are going to go on a pretty sharp angle upwards on the top of the eyelid as I'm showing. So this is so that we get a flat look along the top of the eye when we close it. We're going to adjust the shape a little bit, but yeah, so that's the basic shape for the upper eye. And then for the wing, we're just going to go straight across from the top of that line. It is a little difficult, but yeah, we're doing some pretty big wings today. And then joining from the bottom corner of the eye to the end of that tip. So we have one continuous shave. And now, yeah, you can see it's kind of a flat line across, but we'll do some adjusting now. Then we're just going to fill that in. So I'll just speed this up. Um, so we'll just fill in that shape. And yeah, after that we'll go into the other eye. So as you can see here, it's a little bit of a flat line across the top. And yeah, that's the kind of shape we're going for in general. Just do some adjusting there. And then we will do the other eye as symmetrical as we can. I'm just putting a little dot there so I can kind of gauge where the tip will be and then get them even that way. Okay, so I've done a little bit of adjusting, just tidying them up there and there they are looking relatively even. So yeah. Okay, so now we're going to do nose contour. We're going to be using this Westman Atelier Base Trace Contour Stick, but you can also use this Mecca contour stick. I've had pretty good results for that. Uh, that's what I used to use, but I got given the other one, so I use that. So we're going to go down the sides of the nose and we're going to try make an H shape, is what we're going for today, to make our nose as buttony as we can. So there I'm just swiping across the top. And then, as usual, I'm going to chuck a little bit of contour up the whole sides and under the bottom of the nose. Um, so yeah, Okay, so now we're just going to finger blend. Um, 
could use a brush for this, but I find I actually get more control finger blending, so we're just going to blend that down so we can try and keep these sharp lines up the top. And now we're just going to go through with a large brush and soften it up a bit and clean up all those little bits we've missed to make it a little bit smoother. And back again, the light concealer returns, we're just going to chuck that down the bridge of the nose. And a little bit more again under the eyes, because I felt like the blush kind of overpowered it there. So, in a little exclamation mark shape. And again, we're just going to blend that with the sponge very lightly, being careful not to ruin any of the hard work we did on the contour. And yeah, just blending out those bits under the eye as well. And how could we forget highlighter? I'm using this very sparkly highlighter. I don't know what it is. Again, I got given this. So we're going to put quite a bit of that on the inner corner of the eye and of course the tip of the nose. So we just put heaps there. We want really bright inner corners on this. And flick it down under the eye as well. And now we're just going to go in with a little bit of eyeliner on the inner corner of the eye. Just a little triangle, a tiny bit, just to make the eyes appear even bigger again. Now we're going to be drawing on some lower lashes. This is something I've seen quite a lot in the ego makeup style. Notably Hannah Owo does this quite a lot and I think it's just a really cool look. It's kind of you know, kind of cute. I like having those lower lashes quite long. And of course don't worry about getting them perfectly even, perfectly symmetrical and spaced and stuff. I mean eyelashes naturally aren't perfect so you can if you want but yeah. Now I'm going to take some white eyeliner um, and put that just on the button of my nose for a very harsh highlight. I like this. It looks better in camera. It can look a bit silly in person if you go too hard. But you've got to remember this is a style that's meant to exist online so it makes sense. And we're just going to chuck on a bit of mascara. I'm using this Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes. I quite like this mascara. It's quite expensive. But, you know, it's good. I mainly use it because there's not much left in it and I'm just trying to make sure my eyelashes are matching the false lashes we're going to put on. Now onto the bit that I would say makes the look, the false lashes. I've got these quite large ones here, so they're brand new. I'm just going to snip them down. I'm going to take off just a little bit off the inside edge because I quite like just really having them on that outer edge. And of course we're going to have to glue those down, so we're going to put a little bit of lash glue just along the band. I'm trying my hardest to make it so that you can see, but it's quite difficult for both of us to be able to see this well. And yeah, so just a little bit along that band and we'll start with the right one because that's the one we're going to put on first so that it can be tacky when it goes on. So now, starting with the right one, uh, we're going to put that right next to the eyelashes as close down as we can. Try not to get glue in your eyelashes because it's very hard to get out. Also make sure when you're putting them on the glue is semi-dried. You want it a little bit tacky when it goes on and yeah just so it sticks a little better otherwise it'll slide around a lot when you put it on. And then adjust them so that they're angled correctly. Now we're going to go back in with some mascara just for the bottom lashes now that we've got the top and just adjusting the inner lashes that we might have missed earlier. I never normally touch my eyebrows. Normally they're thick enough as are but this time I decided I'm just going to fill in the front of them with a bit of eyebrow pen. This is just a very cheap eyebrow pen that I got given. It's like a felt tip one, so I'm just going to put a little bit in the front just to define that shape a little more. I decided that the blush wasn't quite intense enough, so I'm going back in with a bit more and blending that through and then just a tiny bit more eyeshadow.
Now we are going to go on to the little hearts under the eyes. I'm using this container which I use for my fake freckles. Um, I'll explain more about that later, but I'm using these dots just for reference so that I can see that I've placed the hearts in the same place. So I'm putting them directly onto my pupils, and now I can see one sitting slightly lower, but apparently I'm okay with that. So I'm getting a little bit of eyeliner, and what I'm going to do is do two lines intersecting in a heart shape. Rather than trying to just draw it in a heart, I'm doing two lines in a V shape, which I can then clean up later. So you can see I'm doing one side of the V, and we're just checking it's sitting in the right place, and then the other side of the V. And that does give you a heart. It's pretty hard to get one that's clean at this size. Um, you can buy stamps, but I haven't really been able to find any, and I would rather just draw them on by hand, because I don't do them that often. Next we're going to go on to freckles, but I might just talk about them for a second before we do. Now, some people accuse the style of appropriating East Asian beauty trends, and as I mentioned earlier, I mean you can definitely see the influences when you look at K-pop and Igati makeup in particular. They're not nearly as extreme as the ego look and the eye makeup or the nose contour, although with the pale foundation and the flushed cheeks, you can definitely see the inspiration. In contrast to that though, you have the addition of the fake freckle, which, personally, I always draw on fake freckles. I quite like them. Some people say it might be to create a more natural looking look, in a similar way to how, in the 18th century, women used to draw back on blue veins to make it seem like they weren't wearing as much makeup and just had naturally very pale, translucent skin. I don't think that's the case, though. I think the freckles are there more for the cutesy look that they give. That said, let's get back to the video. <laughs> so now, fake freckles. As you might have seen earlier, um, I'm using this little container, which I've just put a bit of some cheap contour, and then I have put it in this container and I spray it with setting spray to turn it into kind of a liquid. And then just a small paintbrush. Surprisingly hard to find um, small makeup brushes like this, but Honestly, you can just use a paintbrush, a really fine one. Uh, I've done that as well, uh, and it works pretty well. This one is a makeup brush, but I just like this one, so yeah. Um, so just dotting them around. We want to get them looking as random as possible. We're going to be putting on a lot of freckles today. So yeah, we want to mainly get them just across the cheeks and mainly down the sides of the nose and the apple of the cheek. So if you dot through all the areas you want them and then dab them with your finger just to lighten them up a bit, we don't want them as intense as we're laying them down. So next we're going to go on to lips, but again I'm just going to talk about them for a tiny bit before we get into doing them. The lips being overdrawn is a very interesting one for me. A lot of people draw right over the cupid's bow, which I find interesting because talking to my mum about this, she was saying when she was young, cupid's bows were quite attractive and they were, you know, seen as very beautiful. And it's interesting to see how that has changed over time and how people have completely drawn over them to give the appearance of those nice rounder looks with the bell curve on the upper lip kind of shape. Okay, so uh, back to it for the last part. Now for the lips, we're going to be using some lip liner because we're going to be overlining our lips quite heavily. So straight over the cupid's bow, as is the style, we're just going to go straight over there. What we're aiming for with that top lip is a bell curve sort of shape. So we want to overline most at the top of the lips and then bring it back into our natural lip line as we go into the corners. So that's the top lip done and just under the bottom of the bottom lip, I guess. And then for our lip gloss, uh, 
we're just using this nice one here. I use this all the time, this is my absolute favourite, so I'm just going to chuck that on. Um, everything also will be linked below, uh, I will have a list of everything used in this video, so yeah, we'll just get that evenly along our lip and make sure we blend the lip liner in. The other thing we're going to do is just a tiny line right in the corners of our lips, just to give it more of that kind of pouty shape, I guess. Um, and just a, just a tiny bit. And that is pretty much everything done. Alright, so that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And yeah, I thought I'd have a bit of fun with this video, so let me know what you think. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!